Welcome back to the class on textile finishing. What did we do till last time? We have learned which fibers are called the synthetic fibers, okay? The fibers where the polymer does not exist in nature, all right? Which of them are thermoplastic because thermoplasticity will help in dimensional, dimensional stability in achieving the dimensional stability of garments and the fabrics. This thermomechanical setting is also called the heat setting. Aim is dimensional stability. We have seen some effect on the dyeing because polyester dispersed combination is dependent on the morphological structure and which changes during heat setting and therefore the dyeing characteristic also change in a very peculiar way. And uh, we also learnt about the mechanical properties that they get affected by heat setting process. What are we going to do today? Today we will talk about uh, anti-static finish. This also is in some sense uh, little specific uh, to uh, the synthetic fibers that because generally designed although it could be for any fiber for that matter but the synthetic fibers do require anti-static finish. We did talk about it. So today we will spend some time on uh, this topic. So let us say particularly in winter season when you alight from a car, did you ever feel any shock, any little spark as you get down or sometimes walking on carpets particularly carpets made from polypropylene, nylon, acrylic and so on and so forth, have you ever felt that? I am sure some of you must have felt the kind of a shock at least from when getting down from the car because when you are inside the car, you are rubbing against the upholstery of the car and when you get down, whatever little charge they may, that may have developed during this process now gets dissipated through this little shock. Now, this may not be very harmful, may not have been very harmful to you, uh, but at least it is there. In some cases, it could be very harmful also. So, there is something called a triboelectric series. Various types of generally non-conducting, electrically non-conducting materials you know, they behave like dielectrics and they develop charge either positive or negative based on their surface, based on the ease with which the electron could be transferred. Let us say when you rub two surfaces, uh, one of the polymer, fiber, textile may be able to you know, give out more electrons. So, when it gives out more electron becomes positively charged, it takes up the electron because negatively charged. So, if some kind of a transfer takes place, then uh, they develop some charges. You must have seen in your uh, school days also when you take a fountain pen and rub it on your hair and try to take it near the pieces of let us say paper, they start getting attracted, right? So, this transfer uh, of a bit of a charge from one surface to another, it can happen just because the contact that they were in the contact for some time and then you remove them or you rub them. So, any of these processes uh, would be able to transfer part of the, the charge carrier which is let us say electron in one case, it could be anything else. So, some of them will have a tendency to develop 
a positive charge, others would have a tendency to develop negative charge. For example, in this series, the wool is at the top. Uh, there are others which could be in between also, I have not taken all the material, so that all material, different kind of material, the glass is also material, ebonite is also material. So if you keep taking various kinds of material, you will find a long triboelectric series. But I thought these are some of the textile materials, so you may be interested in just looking at them. Cotton comes somewhere in between, all right. So if you rub the fiber which is written on the top okay, with the fiber which is below it, the top fiber is likely to get a positive charge, the other one obviously will get negative charge because finally its sum is neutral, sum is 0. All right. So uh, let us say if you ask one question, what charge let us say polyester fabric would develop or if they rub against wool? charge on the polyester fabric? What will be the charge on the polyester fabric if you rub against wool? Charge on the polyester will be negative. Is that right? Based on the series. No. Okay. If we do the same thing like the polyester fabric getting rubbed against polypop propylene fabrics, then what will be the charge on the polyester fabrics? It is likely to be positive, is that right? right. So this is a little uh, small information that you may like to carry with you. Gas, the air, the nitrogen and all kind of things they are there. Okay. They are generally insulators like if you can understand you have a switch, electrical switch, when you turn it off the current does not flow because you have created a gap. Why the current is not flowing? Because air which is also a gas is an insulator, so the current does not flow. When you switch on then you touch the electrodes and then the current starts flowing. So this is a common phenomena which we every day experience, all right. So gases are insulators because they will consider various kinds of molecules and uh, which will be neutral in general sense and so they are insulators. So it is helpful also, right. You see the high tension wires running across the skyline they carry large amount of voltages, right? very large voltages. If air was not the insulator, then the current would start flowing through the air and then lot of things would happen which you may not be happy with. All right? So it is good that the gases are insulators in general. However, under certain conditions, this insulation can break down. For example, if you create a very high voltage, it can break down. Sometimes it is interesting to see that. Okay. So you create high voltages, it can break down. Have you seen a gas lighter? Lighter which you can light the flame, gas flame. You see a spark, all right. So, why the spark? That for a very short period of time, you have developed within the two electrodes enough voltage that the breakdown of this so called insulation takes place. So, you have a breakdown voltage can be created. Similarly, in cars, for example, which use spark plugs, okay. So, every time a voltage is created between thing, a spark is there and then you have the fuel burning and the car moves. So you can create situations which may be conducive to the charge flow through the gas if enough voltage is there and distances are less. 
So if that is what happens, the current can actually pass through the air. So this is a special situation. This is what happens when I talked about spark plug, when I talk about the gas lighter, that you have a spark. Or other phenomena also, which are interesting phenomena, like a glow. It can happen. Corona discharge. So these are all discharge phenomena which are taking place under conditions which are suitable for these. That means the gas by itself can in a way either ionize or allow some of the flow of charge carriers through the, through the distance between the electrodes. So let us talk about spark because we are talking about static development on, on a textile type of a material uh, whichever we talk about wool silk. So, if some of you may have seen a bit of a spark at some stage, what is a spark? What is a spark? Spark obviously is what we described that through the gas, if discharge takes place at almost a rapid rate and then you see what? Some light, you see yeah, and maybe some noise. These things may be associated with this happening and what actually is happening is breakdown of this dielectric property takes place under these conditions. Now when will it happen? In air approximately a discharge will take place to the air if the voltages are close to 3 1000 volt per millimeter. So, if there is a millimeter gap and if you have 3000 volt approximately, then you will see spark taking place. If the distance is large, even at this voltage, you will not see. Therefore, the voltage are very, very high when you have the high tension wires going, all right, and still you do not see any spark because the distance between the wires is quite large. But if the distance becomes less, then you can see it. So, we can say that the spark would be generated if voltage is voltage is increased to a, beyond a threshold level and if the distance between the electrodes are decreased, then we will be able to see, which is useful in some application that we talked about earlier. If somehow you make the gap 0, like you touch the electrodes, then what happens? That is called short circuiting. You can see the spark there as well. A lot of wrong things can happen because of this zero gap. So, when the gap is not zero, spark can take place. Certain voltages will be required and if those kind of voltage are generated, then you will see something called a spark, which is discharge, electrical discharge. So, it has been observed if people are walking continuously, particularly in winter season, winter season is a dry season generally and a lot of people walking at a certain stage, people can actually feel and see this spark in synthetic carpets. So, that is something where the textiles are playing role because textile as such were insulator, they can act like dielectric, they can uh, as insulator can keep the charge on them and then when there is a gap and enough, enough voltages could be generated, uh, then you can see a spark, right? Interesting. So, one of course, we have seen a spark in a gas lighter, a spark in a spark plug in a car are useful phenomena. Of course, lightning that takes place also is a very useful phenomena in some sense. Uh, some people obviously may not be happy, some properties can get disturbed, but that is a phenomena that we see. A lot of thunder, a lot of sound, a lot of light. So, harm can also take place. Let us see what. 
if charge accumulates, obviously, whenever there will be a possibility, whenever threshold levels are reached, it will get discharged. And so, what will happen? If the textile material, for example, like a filament yarn wound on a bobbin, if it gets developed charge, so when you unwind, you'll find that there is a ballooning. All the filaments have, let's say, similar charge and they want to separate out. And if you want to process this yarn, it will be very difficult, very difficult. Any small one filament can get entangled other than anything, so difficult in processing. What about the user? You may find sometimes certain types of fabrics, they cling to your body. Have you felt that? So, they cling to the body because the charges may be opposite, but you may not love it. All right. Based on the charge, nature of the charge and the nature of the charge and the dust, which obviously is there, that particles, they can get attracted and you can have additional dust. And of course, you can get shock. These are one thing. However, a little bit of this kind of a discharge possibility is very, very detrimental to the electronic equipment. So there you may find that the floorings have to be electrostatically treated, the, the wirings obviously and the slabs, all those materials have to be treated. Otherwise, any such spark, little bit of thing could damage the electronic equipment and more importantly, the information stored in them, if it, that gets corrupted, then it gets corrupted. So, the harm, it is, these are in the harm's way, shall we say So, it is pertinent that we talk about anti-static finish. Okay? And we are talking about synthetic, finishing of synthetics, where anti-static finish becomes an important finishing treatment. So, let us ask this question again. Whatever anti-static finishes we are going to give, is this whole finishing system a surface phenomena going to be or a bulk phenomena? You understand now the difference between the surface finish or surface requirement of a finish versus the bulk requirement of a finish, you know? You understand those things? Where does the charge normally reside? on an insulator for that matter. The charges are found on the surfaces. Is it true? If this is true, then we only have to worry about the surface of a material. We do not have to change the bulk properties of the material. Only surface properties, if we change, then we should be able to get anti-static finish. Therefore, anti-static finish also is a surface phenomena, surface dependent finish and therefore you uh, would like to treat the surface only. So, let us see some of the small observations which you may have already seen in your daily life and you might like to sort of answer them, think about it. Now, we have seen the triboelectric series. Fibers, polymers, surfaces are going to rub at some stage or the other. So, friction will be part of it. Can we avoid static charge generation? Is this possible? Maybe not. Because if there is a difference between their surface characteristics, because of the contact being or because of friction, some of the charge carriers may get transferred from one to the other and if that happens, that happens. So, it will be quite difficult to say that we will not do something so that charge does not generate. So, what do we do? What can we do? Before that, maybe you would like to answer this question. If you have polyester and cotton fabrics with you, you have been using them. As a user, 
what is your opinion which of these is likely to develop static charge let's say relative more likely more likely to develop static charge between polyester and cotton from your own experience what do you say cotton or polyester it's polyester which is likely to develop more charge you may have seen this the cotton fabrics in general don't seem to be having this problem therefore we are talking about also anti static finishing of synthetics that's one what is the common sense part of it why does this happen why this should be true what is the difference between them one of the difference between them is the hydrophobic nature of polyester compared to cotton which is more hydrophilic all right so hydrophilicity which is the part of the cotton fabric is in some sense responsible for avoiding this static generation or static problem shall we say is that true can we say that they are more hydrophilic moisture again of cotton is how much how much 7 to 8% right but polyester 0.4 so there is a difference because of the chemistry of these two fibers that we already know so if we say hydrophilicity that means they can have water absorbed on them on their surfaces so water is the one which is conducting electricity if somebody asks this question is distilled water electrically conductive distilled water no so how does it matter if it has got lot of water so why would it conduct electricity the water distilled water water which is distilled water which is actually h2o as it is does not conduct electricity so when does it conduct electricity if you add a drop of let's say hcl into the solution and it will suddenly start conducting electricity it becomes the ions are all over and then electricity get generated once it starts generating then current will flow through this okay so by this fiber which is let's say cotton becoming more hydrophilic maybe has more water in it how does it become electrically conducting no fiber surface is so pure that has no ions ions are charged particles various types of electrolytes in whichever little quantity they may be available because you washed through a detergent by a detergent you have removed the detergent but not 100% maybe 0.01% that's good enough that's an electrolyte this ionic if any such type of material are there and then water also is there then obviously you can understand current will flow is that right good so what should be our strategy look at the metal ions does anybody has anybody complained that well metal has developed static no one why not because they can conduct they can conduct whatever charge is there either through a positive source if it comes or otherwise it will just conduct and so no charge is stored all right so that's that's important from that point of view does it mean that if we increase the conductivity 
of the material then would have less problem, less accumulation of charge. That is true. So, our strategy would be not to do something so that charge generation is reduced, but strategy should be charge dissipation should be faster, as fast as possible. The faster it is, better for us. Is that true? Makes sense, right? So, how can the charge decay? Well, if it touches, like you alighted from a car, touched the ground and touched the body of the car, suddenly there was a connection and charge could get transferred. Or if nothing else, slowly it can be transferred to the gas, the environment also, uh, because some charge particles may be there and they can come in contact and some neutralization can take place. Of course, as we said, if humidity is more, then charge transfer also or decay can take place faster, right. So, that is why people say in the winter season, even the hydrophilic materials can develop static electricity, can accumulate charge wool which has got so much moisture again, but in severe winter condition when the humidity levels may be 30 percent or so, then this fiber also can accumulate static charge, right. So, if humidity is more, chances of decay will be faster and of course, we talk about tramp electrolytes which are the electrolytes which are on the surface or in the body wherever they are there, they along in the moist environment would be able to conduct away the charge carriers. Something like this uh, would be seen, so you have uh, so this let us say is time. this is charge at some time t, if this is the initial charge, so it decays with time, this is the general characteristic. So, you have time and the material characteristic which is represented here by tau. Uh, some will be able to dissipate faster, others may dissipate slowly depending upon this value of the tau. So, people do sometimes talk about half time. All right. So, half time uh, to dissipate charge. So, this if you do a treatment or you are comparing different materials, you may like to measure some of these things in different things, let us say in air or any other gas for that matter, you may like to measure and compare which material is better than the other. So, now we are coming to one conclusion that if there is a possibility of conduction then the charge accumulation will be less and if that is true, then we would have much less problem uh, of the static. So, there can be materials which are inherently conducting like metals. So, have you worn any material which is uh, made from metal? Not these days, people used to wear armors hmm, for protection. Obviously, they would not have had the problem of static as such, but for fashion or 
other purposes you may use metallic yarns copper is one of the yarns which uh, can be used in in various uh, industrial applications wherever you believe that the charge uh, accumulation is going to be a problem one may use these and similarly steel and aluminum for example carpets so carpet has a pile and carpet has a backing okay so in the backing from one end of the floor to the other end of the floor or on the sides of the thing in between you can get some interspaced metal yarns could be any one of them they would conduct electricity wherever there and get grounded if you have a strip or something uh, near the wall so you would not have those type of situation where a synthetic carpet can generate so much of a charge that you can see spark so if you don't want them some of these things could be uh, very interesting from the anti static treatment point of view how do you put them as i said they can be embedded in the carpet backing or you can have coarse sheath yarn made where the sheath could be normal textile the core of the yarn may have some metallic systems in high end uh, utilization if you may want to use them you can use them well people sometimes use gold and silver as embroidered material for the fashion but that's if they wearing that obviously the anti static uh, nature also will be imparted to these type of garments but that's a different story altogether fashion is different but it can do the same job which a metal yarn can do limitation limitation of such type of things particularly when you want a flexible system the one which has to bend quite a lot uh, the metal can obviously break the fatigue sets in faster than a normal textile if you take a metal wire and do 20 times you will have broken metal wire a textile on that matter can 1000 times you can squeeze twist nothing happens you know right so the flexibility if there is a question then metallic yarns may or not be there and of course their density is also high all right the density is also high and so you have to be carrying a lot of weight along with the textiles if you are carrying if it is on the floor no problem so there are some inherently conducting non metallic yarns can also be produced all right uh in the metallic ones also uh, you know these days instead of having the full yarn of metal you can have metal particles nano level particles deposited on the yarn that also can do the job or they may be embedded uh, while or introduced or as additive during manufacture of the fiber knowing fully well the static is a surface phenomena if you add too much in bulk that is not going to really be contributing so much but no problem it will be there somewhere to do certain kind of job so you can produce uh, those type of uh, synthetic materials let's like, say silver embedded uh, nylon or polyester uh, filament yarn would be available they will be highly conducting but non metallic conducting material textiles can also be obtained uh, for example carbon is quite conducting by itself icp is the inherently conducting polymers which are like polyaniline polypyrrole etc uh, they are conducting by themselves they don't make uh, fibers but they can be coated onto textiles so what do we do use these yes so you can use them either as a coating as a in situ polymerization some of those type of techniques could be used uh, to make the textile a flexible textile electrically conducting but that's one solution which is inherent le material which are conducting material 
but normally we may like to do it as a finish. So we use antistatic agents. And these antistatic agents, if they are applied onto the textile, then you can get antistatic properties. Spin finish is the term which you may have heard. Every synthetic man-made fiber as it is being produced before winding onto a package, you apply something called a spin finish. Spin finish has three roles. Lubrication, so that fiber to fiber friction, fiber to metal friction, fiber to ceramic guide friction, all that is reduced because these yarns have to pass through different parts of the machines. Another important thing of course is anti-static properties. Because synthetic materials can develop static charge as we understood and therefore processing can be very difficult. So you apply anti-stat. So there will be and other thing is that if there are multifilament yarns, you don't want them to be separated. So cohesiveness also could be one of the parts. So you would have lubrication, lubricating agents like fatty compounds, as you know, antistatic, which will just try to work around cohesiveness because there is a liquid, liquidish or the film formation systems. And therefore, uh, they, they keep the bunch of the filaments together. So what do they use for the anti-static part of it. So learning from the fact that the cotton or woolen or silk would develop less static compared to let's say synthetic, understanding absorption of moisture is an important thing. It acts by, a, by way of tramp electrolytes, but it does work. So you are looking at hygroscopic agents. So you add something which can absorb moisture. So it is available on the surface from the environment, it will absorb moisture. And so do exactly what, let's say, the synthetic, uh, the, the natural fibers are doing. Okay. They were also absorbing moisture because they were hydrophilic. They are hydrophobic. So we are giving hydro, we are putting hydro hygroscopic agents in the spin finish so that it can absorb moisture and give us the antistatic property. Some examples could be like this, which is ethoxylated fatty acid, for example. They could be non-ionic, ionic, based on whatever you can do. So those type of, in fact, there will be mixtures of many of such compounds in a spin finish. It's, it's like a recipe, which is pretty complex, but it will be having hygroscopic agents, right? Glycerol or the compound that we just mentioned here. So, we're looking at this R, could be a fatty group, C11, C17 type. So, are you getting something? Have you seen such material? Yeah, they are the ones you used, almost like softeners. Right? So you have a fatty compound. Where do you have a fatty compound? Because it will have affinity for hydrophobic substances. So it will get attracted while the hydrophilic part, which is this part, will absorb moisture. Right? Similar looking thing, right? Which you have done. This type of thing also you must have read before, phosphoric acid ester salts, something like this. So you can have this type of compound here. This number could be different. Uh, you can have more numbers. For example, the R is let's say 14 to 18 you can have. This also you can have let us say N which may be, let us say, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, uh, based on the kind of thing that you want. All these things can be done. They are almost similar to what we have seen before. So these are ionic kind of compounds, and they can be applied on textiles. Any textile, obviously, we have been applying as a softener, so they will work. So you have hydro 
So, how much hydrophilicity you want will be dependent on this n. The hydrophobicity which we already know will like to go hydrophobic material goes to the hydrophobic you know they like like dissolve like this principle remains is it true. Quaternary ammonium salts we have we have used them where again as softeners you know just imagine you like whatever you are using otherwise as long as there is they are ionic if there is a positive charge there will be a negative charge somewhere sitting right. And so, you have ions. So, ions will also conduct electricity and this can be a lot of hydrophilic groups you can have, you can uh, have fatty chain, simple alkyl. So, you have you can you know manipulate this kind of a molecule. But we must bring in the hydrophilic part, the hygroscopic part which is what going to contribute to the antistatic. But if you add these kind of compounds, some of them will give you softening also. If you make more durable, then you require little bit of cross-linking. So, one of these is a polyethylene amine based system which is once it gets cross-linked from here, all this part is hydrophilic it can attract moisture and hopefully give more permanency more durability uh, when you apply as a finish to the textile. There is another interesting option particularly for example, polyester, polyaglonitrile or any other such material which can be saponified. What is saponification? You know you understand mm -hmm. treatment with alkali. So, you get sodium salts of various kinds of fatty acid esters you remember those things which is saponification. So, if you have a polyester which is an ester okay. So, the ester link can break by this saponification process in an alkali solution let us say sodium hydroxide caustic solution. So, what will happen you know esters are sensitive if they are sensitive what will happen? Well, carboxyl group will get separated, hydroxyl group will get separated and so you will create on the surface let us say you do a very nice treatment, limited amount of treatment then the surface you will suddenly say part of a chain which is a long chain may be embedded already, but part of it is now broken, it has got broken let us say a polyester may get broken into something like a one end is created which is the acid and the other end is created which has got the alcohol. So, you have the hydrophilic moieties getting generated on the surface. What do you think is it going to be a antistatic or not let us see it is going to be anti-static as well. Will it going to be durable or not? This is going to be durable also. It is going to be durable also because a polymer molecule like polyester is a long molecule. Part of it is inside somewhere. Something which was exposed has got hydrolyzed into carboxyl and hydroxyl groups. So, what would happen is it will start attracting moisture. You will be surprised that the bulk property of this may not change much almost nothing. Even somebody says the moisture again has changed you might find the moisture again of the whole bulk of material has not changed, but on the surface you have created some hydrophilic sites. You can check if you want to check whether it has been created or not you know try to put uh, in a cationic dye solution you will see the surface is getting colored because of the ionic nature ok. Interesting is not it? So, what is important is become antistatic. If somebody asks this question will this material after this treatment let us say a polyester 
it become anti static because hydrophilic surface has been created it is more durable because nothing else can happen because the molecule cannot just come out all right it also has another property which is also a surface prop surface finish which we given before is soil release you know by doing this anti static nature will also be there and it will release the soil easily we also said soil release finish also is a surface phenomena base surface energy if it is hydrophilic the detergent solution could go in between the layers of the oily layer soil and then it can roll off so good way to treat let's say something similar can be seen on acrylic also something similar can be seen if you want even nylons also can be hydrolyzed all right so because amides can also be broken so from the point of anti stat we have taken some example some of these things can be uh, used to create a good finishing environment people got little motivated by the same process which we said the use of alkali to do a bit of a saponification on the surface of let's say polyester polyacrylonitrile or whatever but for polyester one interesting finish people developed what we call the deweighting or a weight reduction so you reduce the weight by what dissolve the material i mean the start from the surface treat for little more tongue time and you will see 5% 2% sometime 10% material can be removed that's deweighting why should somebody do such kind of thing of course it will give you anti stat but anti stat doesn't require so much of a reduction in weight it can just do without that but people found very interesting properties the metal became very soft almost silk like and so lot of synthetic material dress materials are available which may have been given deweighting treatment and they appear very very soft synthetic let's say polyester itself because same alkaline hydrolysis will keep reducing the weight if you take high temperature okay if you go home more concentration this can happen and so what will happen weight will get reduced so you will see 5% loss in the weight people may be unhappy but people who are doing this treatment they are very happy because they find some beautiful characteristics at the end of the day so instead of going for high temperatures people can reduce the temperature or conditions can be made softer if you have additives some of the additives people have talked about ethylene diamine uh, which can reduce the time of treatment which is good the same type of weight reduction if it can happen or some other cationic agents like uh, cetyl uh, you know tri methyl ammonium bromide you know so interesting or some compound people have tried a complex compound which is the uh, imidazolinium chloride uh, which also can if added in the solution along with the alkali Uh, it can reduce the processing conditions and particularly in the time and temperature and you can get a similar weight reduction so weight reduction takes place so weight reduction itself is a finish for polyester so deweighting sometime known it reduces the weight but natural but gives you softening treatment why does it give a softening treatment does it change the bulk property it is removing the polymer from the surface so does it you know change the bulk property no it does not this bending and softness as we understood is a very low deformation property it's only bending does not say you extend it like you have a tensile stress you put a lot of elongation takes place but you bend hardly any elongation takes place hardly any it's a very small but it is very sensitive to hand touch feel soft stiff stuff right we talked about earlier 
because the low deformation property people are finding that some polymer which has come out let us say there is a fabric yarns were passing over each other warp wept and so on and so forth there are contact points everywhere if some of the material is removed the distance between the two overlapping yarns between them slightly is more the slightly more means less contact that means when you bend less resistance becomes softer very soft and some of the oligomers may have been removed some of the spin finish parts may have been removed and surface also becomes almost silk like it is not silk obviously we know it is not silk but silk like it shines little more it is softer feels pretty good all those things are there therefore people are ready to lose 10 15 percent of the weight and get a better property so this is a de-weighting finish you can call it for process so today we have learned something why is static electricity is generated we understood why spark occurs which is discharge takes place electrical discharge why do we need anti finishing anti static finishing treatment simply because otherwise we will be having some trouble to the user for processing or electronic equipment all of them can have important thing to remember it is a surface finish uh, dissipation is the mechanism by which we will all the anti static agents are likely to work metals by themselves can be used they are very conducting or we use agent which can absorb moisture more and so they are hygroscopic material which can be durable non durable depending upon what kind of treatment that you give but as a principle this is what is going to happen right so in the next uh, class that we go we will we have talked about uh, chemistry of various compounds so now this is next class we will not be talking about any chemistry at all we will talk about minimum application technique what it means is can we reduce the water consumption during this application process uh, this is what we will do in the next class till then see you all the best have fun